Hello, this is Tazalon, and I'm here in Stalingrad in my VK-2801 for Volume 19 of the Lighthouse After Action Reports, taking a look at how you can play in a big city. Now, the first thing I have to say is, unlike some maps like, say, Sand River Assault, or Malinovka, or other more open maps, Prokhorovka, what works one battle isn't probably going to work the very next battle, or the battle after that, or the battle after that. Cities are the most dynamic, most fluid, and and unpredictable maps that you get. It varies greatly what will work from battle to battle. So you can't look at this and say, hey, he did good on this battle going here, and expect to replicate the results doing the same thing the first time you get Stalingrad. It's probably not going to work out that way. You have to be alert maintain a high degree of situational awareness and just be fluid and ready to take advantage of whatever little opening you see because in a city map you may only see little advantages you very rarely do you see something that just begins you know exploit me exploit me so in this battle we have one artillery apiece they have one um, scout and we have two and then a good mix of other tanks they're a little bit heavy on heavies we have a little bit more TDs. Doesn't matter in a city. I tend to play more in the right hand side of the map because the west side is usually a big brawl with heavies and TDs. My goal is usually to try to get around the back and come in on the back side of them so I can flank them. A lot of times instead of going this way I'll start off by going up in here. It just it varies from battle to battle and each one can be successful and each one can be disastrous. So you just have to be ready to to change what you're doing really quickly. So I see the thirteen seventy five coming down to the beach. He doesn't know I'm down here, so it's basically a game of cat and mouse with me. Pull up and see if I can see him. There he is. And now he knows I'm here. He's going to duck behind the building, I think. Well, I'll try to shoot first. I have a huge advantage on him right now because of the hit point differential. And he's gone. Now I see the T29 up there. I don't see anybody else. So I'm going to start running along the water. This can work wonders or it can greatly backfire when you get up here and discover a big TD looking straight at you or a couple tanks up here and you're all of a sudden you're isolated and against the odds and it ends your fight. On the other hand, you can get all the way up here and realize they don't have anybody else along the beach and it gives you free reign to cut uphill and across the top of the map and flank people which is what happens here and it's like I said just because it worked for me this battle the next five times I try it it may be disastrous it really varies from battle to battle you have to be ready to change what you're doing and go to backup plan A, B, or C right away get to shoot in the back of this panther get a fire perfect he is out of here take a shot in the run on the way by and hit it I want to come up here and see if I can find the artillery We already had the Cromwell B flanking that guy, so it doesn't help to have two. It'll just make him turn around. It ruins the advantage of flanking. Now I'm going to come back and see if I can get behind him. Nope, he's out of there. Cromwell B over to my right. So I'm turning over to Heat. 
And again, he heats like T-34s. HE does okay against Cromwells, but it's not consistent good damage. Fire heated a Cromwell, and you can take him on one-on-one -on -one many times and win. Because you get big hits on him a lot with heat. Yeah, it looks like the other Cromwell took him out. So I have a great flanking opportunity here. It's like every time I go another block, it's like, oh man, I still have to go farther. I still have to go farther. I'll get there eventually. T-34, you fire in the back of a T-34 and you can light them up. Don't use heat, use HE. You get bigger damage with HE. Just constantly working to get shots from behind them. The goal here is just put yourself in a position to where you have cover nearby if they start swiveling their turret toward you. Duck behind your cover. These are all tanks that can big a can take you out in one shot right now. He's starting to shoot toward me, so I turn, I back up. Now I get another shot at him, and I put it right over top of his head. There's the game. So for the battle, I get 2,032 XP, two spots, zero spotting damage. Because I was out in front, nobody was down along the, the water with me as I went around. So I didn't light up anybody for anybody else. I was just lighting them up for myself. Four kills and 2,664 damage. And I ended up leading my, kill, my team in kills and in XP. There wasn't really anything overly brilliant about this. It's just I went down to the water got to go one on one, not even one on one, it was probably two or three on one against a 1375 which is a total mismatch and as I ran the water expecting, I really expected I'd discover more tanks farther to the north, I never did so it made me, it allowed me to get all the way up to the A line cut back to the west as I went across the the top of the beach I took a shot on the move and got lucky enough to hit it um, and then just kept going and took out the arty, came back. Well, actually, as I came on across, I, I got the TD first with a fire. And then as I kept moving, I got a shot on, I don't even know who I hit up there. I just shot as I went by, and I figured, well, there's a couple tanks down there. Maybe I'll hit one of them, so why not fire? Went over and got the uh, the artillery. I was coming back to help with the heavy and somebody else, the Crom OB, already took it out. And I got to go up against the uh, Crom B switch to heat because against the Cromwell and the Cromwell B the heat is way more effective than HE and uh, the our Cromwell B ended up getting the kill shot on him and then it was all the way over to the west side of the map and just go from from flanking attack to flanking attack and when you're in that the end game of these or the mid game in these city maps as long as you know where most of the tanks are on the battlefield there's just numerous opportunities to use the buildings as um, emergency cover if you have to, pull out, take a shot, and you just keep taking the shot until they rotate the turret toward you or they die. As soon as they start rotating the turret, easy, back up around the corner, they don't ever get a shot on you. 
and you can exploit that time and time again and it you, I can't say you know go to this intersection or go to this intersection or go to that intersection because every map's going to be different every battle's going to be different you go wherever you need to go to get the shot Stalingrad's really good for it because unlike um unlike say Himmelsdorf where there's like really big city blocks Stalingrad has smaller smaller blocks with more angles that you can get so it's just a matter of knowing your maps knowing where you have to go to get that free shot on people every battle will be different as I said the key high degree of, situ of situational awareness and map knowledge especially on this map there's a lot of walls that you would think you could just blast through and get to the other side of a building and here they're apparently made out of super concrete and you can't dent them so you have to go all the way around even though it looks like it's a small block it's actually bigger because what appears to be a road is really blocked off by some super strength wall from Stalingrad taking advantage of the holes the enemy gave me happy hunting